The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. I'm going to start this episode talking about wheat. And as growers know, sometimes winter is not kind to wheat. And come spring, we often have to take out the crop. What do you have to think about before switching to soybeans? On this episode, Omafra weed control specialist Mike Cobra looks at the potential for soybean injury from fall applied cereal herbicides. There are herbicides that are reasonably safe to plant into, but there are ones to avoid. Here's Mike Cobra. So every year we get this question in Ontario, uh, a producer's growing wheat and they've applied a herbicide either the previous fall or maybe even that spring and for whatever reason the circumstances are such that the, the wheat crop's not looking great, it's either too thin or there's too much winter kill and the economics are suggesting that they should switch to crops and often the question is if I have a, so a her cereal herbicide down in the fall or spring can, can I plant soybeans? And the honest truth is there's not a lot of information on that. And, and this is a trial here to try and get some data to maybe uh, change label statements to, to answer that question. And so uh, a couple of interesting observations here. First of all, I'm standing in the middle of, of a couple of really common cereal herbicides. And as I look down, I don't see any injury. And these were applied the day that these soybeans were planted. So kind of a worst case scenario, much different than what would actually happen in the field to a farmer. Uh, here's another common cereal herbicide. Again, we don't see any visual signs of injury. So that's, that's a good bit of information to, to indicate that, yeah, maybe we could be a little bit more aggressive on labeled statements in terms of allowing uh, a plant back to soybeans. But there's one cereal herbicide and one particular active ingredient that is a no-fly zone that causes way too much injury and would be uh, horrific if, if someone planted soybeans into it. And that's uh, this particular spot here. The active ingredient is clopyrrolid. It's found in herbicides like Lontrell and a newer herbicide called Prominex. And there's quite a lot of that uh, twisting in FNSD. It's a, a group four herbicide. So we see a lot of that injury on many of these plants here. I don't think this will be 100% lethal, but the, the yield loss, I would hazard a guess, would be substantial. So, uh, you know, bottom line is, is that this has been a nice way to screen different herbicides to see which ones cause problems. Uh, we certainly have one here that does, uh, but we have some optimism with others that maybe then we can pursue some label expansions. So the obvious question is, if I can't plant soybeans after applying clopyrrolid to cereals, either in the form of Lontrell or Prominex, what can I plant? And so the active ingredient clopyrrolid is labeled for use in field corn. You could uh, safely shift to field corn in a situation where you thought the wheat had to be terminated and you want to plant something else, but not soybeans, only field corn. 